Okay, so you can see here in the mid, sorry, in the middle of the ocean we've got these ridges. Um, and actually we didn't look how high these ridges are. Oops, sorry, I clicked on the wrong thing. Show elevation profile. So these ridges from the bottom of the sea floor, which is about at six kilometers. See something funky is going on here. I don't know why it's doing that. But you can see this is at about three kilom 3.5 kilometers deep. This is at about six. So this ridge is about 2.5 kilometers high, which is not minuscule. That's a very, <laughs> it's quite a mountain range. If you think that Lesotho in South Africa is about three kilometers. So this is about as high as um, if you're in Cape Town to somewhere in Lesotho. So it's quite a high range. So this is a mid-ocean ridge up here in the middle of the ocean. And our trench over here is not in the middle of the ocean. It's right next to a continent. And the reason why we got that is here, this ocean on the left-hand side is actually this plate here, which is called the Nazca Plate, is actually going down underneath South America. And that's called a subduction zone. It's subducting under. And the two plates are coming towards each other, so it's a convergent plate boundary. Okay, let's move on. So it says go to Challenger Deep. Uh, where is it? So this is easy to do. You would just search Challenger Deep up here and it will take you to it. And you'll be flying, flying, flying. And it really zooms in. So you're going to have to zoom out to figure out where the heck you are. But you can see we've moved here between Asia and Australia to this very complicated tectonic region. So, sorry, I've lost it again. Uh, it'll drag me to it. Oh, there's my pin. So you can see it's, it's the Mariana Trench. And let me just turn off this profile. So it's easier to see. So if we zoom in here, you can see that Challenger Deep is in this dark region here, which remember off the west coast of. South America meant there was a trench. But in on the west coast of South America, we were dealing with a, a continent and an ocean plate. And here we're kind of just in the ocean. So you can also get trenches in the ocean where you have ocean uh, plates colliding with ocean plates. And you'll see here if your, um, oops, sorry, if your terrain is clicked on down here, you should be able to put your mouse over Challenger Deep and up down here will tell you the elevation at Challenger Deep. So minus 8 kilometers, I think, didn't it actually get down to 10 or 11? I'm not sure. Uh, I thought it was 10 or 11, but I might be missing something here. If you want to double check, you can always draw a profile across it. Um, and then you can see what the elevation profile looks like. a while to load and zoom in. Okay, so you can see my elevation profile is not doing anything, so I'm going to right click on the profile, go properties, altitude, and clamp to see floor. And as soon as I do, do that, it gives me a decent profile. And you can see it's going down here. I've got 10 kilometers. Um, so this is the profile across Challenger Deep. So let's take that off. So yeah, the question here asks you about how deep it is, what is the difference between it and Mount Everest. So Challenger Deep is actually deeper than Everest is high. And um, so you can see there's a lot of topography on the seafloor. And it looks here, uh, it says give the location of three other trenches on Earth. So you can look through either search up here trench or look through and find some regions where you've got these darker zones in the ocean. Um, and it should give you, keep, give you the names of those trenches. Okay, so the next question, the next section is about seismicity. And so we're really just going to be looking at this, um, what's this called, the scale bar here. And you can see there's several different dots along the edges here. Um, maybe let me take off the volcano so it's not too busy. There we are. And so you can see, I'm actually going to go back to South America. South America is just the easiest. This is such a complicated region that South America is the easiest place to look at. Okay, so you can see here we're on the west coast of South America. And there's orange dots close to the coast, which is 0 to 33 kilometers. Then yellow, then green, then blue, 
Uh, I don't see too many purple and then red. And so the earthquakes are getting deeper going from left to right. And so you have to remember that this ocean plate over here is actually going underneath the continent. And so it's going underneath the continent here and it's quite shallow. And as it goes down, it gets deeper and deeper. And that's where these earthquakes are occurring. It's a, they're occurring along this ocean plate that is subducting down. And we're going to learn about that in the upcoming lectures. And so you can understand why it's shallow over here where it's just starting to subduct and deeper underneath the ocean. So you, you actually know that this continental crust is going, I'm sorry, this ocean crust on the west is going as deep, well, it's going along, um, dipping down as this far below the continent. Um, so Tia talks here about um, epicenters and focal points of earthquakes, which again we're going to learn in more detail. And it says, describe the pattern of earthquakes over the Earth's surface. And so you can see, at least on the west coast of South America, it's not random. We don't just randomly have earthquakes. They're actually associated with these plate boundaries. So here we've got a subduction zone, and you'll notice that at subduction zone, there's a range of depths, like from 0 to 800 uh, kilometers. Whereas if you come here to the mid-ocean ridge, you've actually mainly just got a few of these very shallow earthquakes. And you'll even notice that the earthquakes aren't occurring along the red here, which is where the plates are splitting apart. They're occurring along these green transform faults. So don't be afraid if you've never heard that word before. Literally just means that instead of splitting apart here, the plates are moving past each other. They are um, sliding past each other. Again, we'll learn that in more detail. But that's where these earthquakes are occurring. So in this table, you would say at the ridge, you've got smaller, shallow earthquakes that are a bit dispersed, whereas towards the trenches, you've got a range of depths. They're quite clustered, and they change from shallow, close to where the plate's starting to subduct, and deeper as this plate is getting deeper. OK. And it says, using earthquake depths as evidence, is the Earth's lithosphere thicker in the vicinity of the ridge or in the vicinity of a trench? So it's pretty much saying, where are your deeper earthquakes? And then we've said that by the trench. Don't worry if you've never heard this word lithosphere before. We're going to learn about it this week or next week. OK, so volcanoes. It says, leaving the earthquake layer on, um, put on the volcanoes. And what is their relationship between the two, between earthquakes and volcanoes? OK, so let's turn on our volcano layers. And you can see it's not so easy to see in the mid-ocean ridge, but you can. There are some volcanoes here. So in general, the earthquakes and the volcanoes are, called, are occurring along these plate boundaries. It's a lot easier to see in South America, whereas here you've got your circles, which are your earthquakes, and these triangles, these red triangles, are volcanoes. So obviously, they both are very good at marking plate boundaries, which is what we're going to talk about now. So this section here talks about plate boundaries. You've got this one here between Africa on the right-hand side and South America on the west. And this is your mid-ocean ridge. It's going through the middle of the oceans. Um, and it says here, click on the other layers on and off and see the relationship between plate boundaries and features like volcanoes and earthquakes. And we've said there's a close correlation. And then here, this is talking about the west coast of South America. And like we've said before, this west coast of this plate boundary here, or this subduction zone, is well marked by earthquakes and volcanoes. All of these other regions here, where there's these red lines, are exactly the same as these red lines here. So we know it's a ridge. It's a spreading apart plate boundary. Um, these green here are these transform faults, so it's where the plates, instead of splitting apart, they're actually moving past each other, which we'll learn a bit more. And then this blue here is the subduction zone. So let's see what it looks like up here in North America. So you can see there's a bit of blue here, so I think it's a subduction zone. I don't know much about Central America. But if we come here to the west coast, um, so what have we got? Here's America, here's Canada, and it's quite complicated here. So let's zoom in. Um, where is San Francisco? Because we know that is where the San Andreas Fault is. So I'm just going to search for it up here. Cisco. Search. 
Okay, so here's San Francisco. And if you zoom in, it's not very easy to see, but this orange line here um, is actually a plate boundary where instead of the plates moving apart or one going under the other, they're actually moving past each other. So I'm not sure which direction. Say, for example, this left-hand side is moving up, this right-hand side is moving down. And that's caused some huge earthquakes here in San Francisco. And if you move, zoom out, this line, this orange line, changes to blue. So I'm, I don't know if it's subduction. I assume I'm not so sure. But there actually used to be subduction here, and the whole plate got sucked, well, subducted under America and has disappeared now. And so instead of subduction, we've got this transform plate boundary. Uh, but don't stress about remembering that if it felt like a lot of information. But you can see you've got quite a complicated plate boundary here off of the west coast of North America and Canada. Blue, I'm assuming subduction, you've got this red, which is your spreading ridge. You've got this big um, transform fault, a lot of earthquakes up here. I'm just trying to look around the world. And so what happens here, we go from Canada into Alaska, and this here is called the Aleutian Arc. And you can see if you zoom in, there's a lot of volcanoes, a lot of earthquakes, and a blue line meaning subduction. And you can see even the topography, there's this dark blue, which means this is a trench, which we know is linked to the subduction zone. That's why you've got so many volcanoes along the top here. And then we're actually getting, let me get us north here, into Japan. We've got Japan over here. Um, let's just zoom in so I can check I'm in the right place. Yeah, Fuji, definitely Japan here. And so you can see this whole region here, this whole blue um, subduction region is called the Pacific Ring of Fire. And it's because you've just got so many volcanoes around here. So it's literally this ring of fire. Um, and so in Japan, you've got subduction happening. You can see these crazy, crazy earthquakes. That's why we had the earthquake that destroyed the nuclear power station in Fukushima, and you've got all these uh, volcanoes, so quite a dangerous place to live. Um, yeah, so the whole point of this is we, I was just taking you along a bit of a tour of the plate boundaries because you need to start thinking about where you want to focus for your final essay.